Hello, welcome in. Hello, Twitch family. Welcome to the Country Heat House. This is the Amazon Country Heat House in Nashville, Tennessee. My name is Kelly Sutton. I am here with Amber Anderson. Hi, everybody. Hi. We're so happy that you guys are a part of this tonight. This is where we get to do our podcast, Country Heat Weekly, each and every week. And tonight, we are doing something so special. You're going to surprise and delight you. Are you ready for this? Okay. Country Music Month is the month of October. We still have another week, so we're still celebrating. Mm -hmm. Although, for us, I mean, Country Music Month is every month. Every single day. That's very, very true. (laughs) But we have a special edition of Breakthrough Live with the one and only Lainey Wilson. Get ready, everybody. A preview and a performance. <laughs> she has an album coming out, Bell Bottom Country. It is happening this week, Friday. So y'all are going to get a little taste of that. Stay tuned because we are pumped. We're so excited we for this. We are so happy for this. But first of all, we need to brag on our girl a little bit. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Okay. So Lainey's having like the most amazing breakthrough year. You guys, she is this year's most nominated artist at the 2022 CMA Awards, making her one of only four artists in CMA history to earn six nominations in her first year. Six. You heard that right. That's insane. Six. That's in her just first crazy. Year. <laughs> Nobody does that. I mean, it's like it, it's it's just It's insane. It's It's insane. It's absolutely incredible. So tonight, you have the best seat in the house at your own home, being a part of our Twitch family. We are so happy to have you along. Hey, we've got the chat up. If you want to put some stuff in the chat, we're going to be checking that. Every once in a while, we're going to be jumping in and grabbing some of your questions. Now, make sure that you're following us on Country Heat Weekly, our podcast. You can follow us on Amazon Music. Because on 11-3, which is three days before my birthday, by the way, Yay. I know. Happy November birthday the third. Mm-hmm. November the third. Lainey is going to be our hero guest on our Country Heat Weekly podcast. So you are really going to get a deep dive on the new album, all the things that she's been working on, and then on the ninth of November, front and center, honey, the CMA <laughs> Awards, the fifty sixth annual CMA Awards, coming to you from Nashville, Tennessee, where she is nominated for Album of the Year, Female Vocalist of the Year, Music Video of the Year, Musical Event of the Year, New Artist of the Year, and Song of the Year. That's six. That's in case six. we didn't say that before. That's six. <laughs> so exciting. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay. If that wasn't enough. The very next week, after she wins all of her awards, <laughs> she's going to be making her acting debut on Yellowstone. <laughs> oh, I cannot wait. I've been watching the trailer over and over and over again, just like getting more and more pumped yes, up. Yes, yes. So did we mention she's having like just the best year? Just this just breakthrough. It's, it's the definition of breakthrough. <laughs> Without further ado, please welcome to the Amazon Country Heat House, Lady Wilson! Here she is. I'm telling you, these are my hype girls. Like, I was over here trying to be quiet because I was, y'all got me like feeling the Holy Spirit. I was ready to scream and shout. I was like, get it, girl, go. Oh my God. There's no one happier for you than us because we've loved you and watched you through all of it and Mm -hmm. then to have a year like this year Mm. I mean I know it's a lot yeah has it actually soaked in yet it's starting to I feel like we've just been so go 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 right I will say I've just had to kind of like take certain moments to like look up and be like all right We really are. We have covered a lot of ground Mm -hmm. um, in Mm -hmm. a short amount of time. I mean, y'all know I've been here for 11 years, but like in the scheme of things, when things actually started working, they started working. Yeah. And um, got so much to be thankful for. And I know y'all believed in me from the beginning. And I just like, y'all my girl. (laughs) I love this so much. (laughs) So when you're going into a week like this week, you know, you've got that album coming out. This yeah. this week feels like a true, like, launch into, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. obviously, all of these amazing things that you have yeah. coming up. What is, like, waking up on, like, the Monday of this week feel like? Of, like, okay, you got you got your album coming out. And then there's the CMAs. <laughs> and then there's Yellowstone. There's all of these things in a row. I know. What does that feel like? Is well, it still surreal? It is very and surreal. It's like, as soon as I feel like, all right, we're about to be running out of blessings because we've had a lot of them, mm-hmm. a lot in a row, it just seems like they just keep coming. 
and um, things are coming to fruition. They really are. My team works so hard. My band works so hard. Um, I've had so many people who have given me opportunities in this town, and I feel like this is really just a big win for everybody. You know, I, I keep thinking, I can't remember the song, but I remember the lyric, be careful what, what you wish for, because mm-hmm. you just might get it all. <laughs> I really feel like, yeah. I know. I didn't know I wasn't going to get any more sleep. (laughs) Right? It's been incredible to watch the journey for you. Let's talk about preparing for an album release, because that is like the the long ramp. You know, this this isn't the short ramp to get on the interstate. This is the long ramp. So you've had this time to craft the songs, pick the songs, know which songs that you want Mm -hmm. on this album and what you want it to represent. That's right. How long was that process for you? Oof, girl. So my last record, Same What I'm Thinking, yeah. we recorded it in 2019. Oh, wow. Um, so as soon as we went into the studio and we recorded that record, I was working on the next one. Okay. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was like, all right, you know, you never know how much time you're actually going to have to write for that next record because, mm-hmm. you know, everybody says you get your whole life to write for your first one. Um, but I will say... During the pandemic, I mean, I got to write 300 plus songs. I was writing every day just to just to try to stay above water. Honestly, it's my therapy. So I yeah. feel like we have been, we've had just as much time to prepare for this rec- record as we did that first one. That's awesome. So that's a yeah. blessing too. I mean, mm-hmm. there's so much that goes into this. I mean, we went through tons. I mean, hundreds of songs trying to figure out which ones were were going to be the fit for this project, and we figured it out. Mm. We figured it out. 300 plus. I know. I know. A lot of songs. I didn't say they were all good. Uh, I didn't say they were all good. I hope some of them never see the light of day. But they all served a purpose. Yes. To get me to that next song. Exactly. And I forgot. There was somebody that was talking about this. It's a writer. And they said, sometimes I give myself permission to write something bad because I need to get it out. Yep. Mm -hmm. So the good can come through. That's right. Like, you got to cleanse. I feel that way, too. To get it all out. There's okay. sometimes when I'm in the middle of a song and I'm like, yeah, this ain't, I might not even turn this one into the publisher. <laughs> They're going to drop me. <laughs> They're like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay, so in the chat, we want to hear where you guys are yes. watching from. We love that about our Twitch family. They're everywhere. I already see we have someone watching from South Africa. Ah, are you kidding? That's yes. amazing. That's awesome. Oh, I love all of this. That's awesome. Uh, so many people in here. Toby's in here. He says, Louisiana girl done good. Congrats on everything. Laney uh, from your hometown guy. Oh my gosh. I love that. Is it Toby? Toby. 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 <laughs> Thank you, man. He's probably one of my cousins. Who knows? I was going to say. <laughs> They're all related. Oh my God. Oh, cousin nice Toby. To you. <laughs> uh, you know, I do want to talk about finding the people that you work with and especially for this album mm-hmm. Jay Joyce has been a big part of that yep. how did you meet him yep. where where did you guys figure out that that was going to work because you know it's just like any relationship you're right. sometimes that doesn't necessarily gel yep. it's not going to give you the sound that you're looking for yep. so why was Jay Joyce the perfect fit when I moved to town I mean he was doing stuff that I was just a huge fan of Eric Church you know mm-hmm. I love what he does I feel like he just kind of does what he wants to do, how he wants to do it. He's not trying to fit in with anybody. And I really appreciate that. Um, like, when you hear a song come on the radio, I mean, like, you know it's Eric Church. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You just do. And I think Jay Joyce has a lot to do with that. And so, you know, whenever I had um, signed my, my deal, I, I, you know, told my label, I said, um, I would love to work with Jay Joyce. And it really is crazy how the stars align because a song that I wrote called L.A. with a guy named Frank Romano, he was really good friends with Jay Joyce, and he lived, like, right down the street from him. So I think every day he'd kind of go over to his studio in East Nashville, which is, like, mm-hmm. this old, renovated church. So he connected me and Jay. I actually went over to the church, to the studio, like, three times before I even played music for him. We would just hang out. I mean, it was one of those things where we were, like, just getting to know each other. I mean, he was getting to know my story, where I come from, really, like, just who I am. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what makes an incredible producer. I truly do. So the third time I went over to the church, I, like, walked in the door, and it's, like, this big old sanctuary, and he's lighting up a cigarette, and he's, like, blowing smoke up in the air, and you see the smoke in front of the stained glass windows. It's, like— coolest thing ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, he is who he is, and he yeah. don't give a, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, he, like, throws me a guitar, and I play, like, one and a half songs, 
And he was like, you know, kind of like, I was good, you know. And we didn't talk about it anymore. We just continued on with our conversation. And I'm like, you know, it was kind of that like that first date. Yeah, you just don't does, know. Does he like me? Oh, no. I was left there thinking, I don't know if he loves me or hates me. I can't really tell. So I get home and I messaged him and I said, I was like, Jay, I don't know what you had in mind, but I know what I did. And he said, let's do it. So that's, that. that's, that's, that's all it was. And so I, you know, got to so call cool. the label and said, I've talked to him and he's on board if we can figure it out. So we figured it out. And he is, it's so crazy because he's so different than me. Mm-hmm. I mean, this man walks around in a black trench coat and lights his cigarettes on a toaster. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? He's like a vampire. <laughs> and, but he has become one of my closest friends. That's so great. That's like the beauty of Nashville. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, the whole time you were telling that story, I'm like, well, of course that's how it happened. Yeah. Of course it was someone who was championing you and going in ahead of you and being like, you should, you should, yeah, Mm -hmm. you should hear this girl, you should hear her. But then it's not just transactional. It's not like you show up and you're like, okay, play music for me. Right. Right. It's so relational and it's so, it's such a good foundation mm-hmm. for, you know, like you said, building that relationship with mm-hmm. a producer, someone that's going to understand you inside and out because you're pouring your soul into this music. They yes. got to be right there alongside yeah, you. Absolutely. And we did that with the first record, but I feel like, I mean, Jay has gotten to know me even more with this second one, but I've also gotten to know myself more. Mm-hmm. And so I think we've really figured out what Bell Bottom Country truly is. And we've done that together and it's pretty, it's pretty cool. I mean, to think about somebody like him and somebody like me being like buddies, uh-huh. um, you would never expect it. <laughs> I love him. That's so good. But it works in the best way. Yep. All right. In the, the chat, way. Emily's like, can't wait to see Lainey's album release show Thursday. Woo-hoo, uh, so Emily. we got friends there. We got somebody from Omaha that yes. is saying, I get to see you Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Yes. Come on now. What? The album release. And then we're playing two shows with my boy, Luke Combs. Yeah, Apparently, so just, it's a party this weekend. Yeah, it's this be a is uh, Hugo Hugo CP is I think that's the right one. But they are going to all of the above. So yes. big big fan. Come on! And then Annie says, "Will you please tour Australia?" You know what? We got to make it happen as soon as we possibly can. I feel like every time I even just get on an interview with folks over in Australia, I'm like, these are my people. (laughs) (laughs) They are my people. And they love country music. Yeah, Yeah. they do. For sure. It's so cool to think that, like, you know, I'm from northeast Louisiana, from a town of 200 and some change, that what I write could be relatable on the other side of the world. I mean, we truly do have a lot more in common than you would ever even imagine. Mm -hmm. Isn't that right? That's so true. That's so true. Okay, I'm going to go to a question from Toby. Okay. Because I want to dig into the album a little bit. Okay. Toby asked, what is your favorite song on the new album? Oh. That's hard, Toby, because they're all my babies. Um, I feel like the one that I, like, am gravitating towards right now is one that I wrote about my daddy. And... um, you know, I've shared this with y'all, of mm. course, but my daddy got sick this summer and we thought we were going to lose him. It's a song called Those Boots, also known as Daddy Song. And I spell D E D D Y because that's how I say it. I, well, <laughs> we got the track listing. It was just in an email. And uh-huh. I, was like, I, was I went, is that? No. But then no, I heard you spinning. in my head say it. I was like, mm, daddy. that's yeah. right. Daddy. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, of course, the song meant a whole lot to me the day that I wrote it, but I'll, it just means more to me now. I feel like sometimes you forget how much you love somebody until mm-hmm. you feel like you're about to lose them. So right. um, I'm proud of that one. I am. Oh. Well, That's since good. we're talking about the new album, tell us about Hillbilly Hippie. We want the, give us, I feel like <laughs> Hillbilly Hippie is like, yes. yes. <laughs> is that what I am? Yes. yes. And we love every minute of it. <laughs> That's it. Oh my gosh, this had to be, it had to be the first song on the record. It just had to. I feel like it really set the tone. Yeah. Um, I mean, this record is who I am unapologetically. And I hope people can listen to it and feel like that they can do that too and be nothing but themselves. <laughs> but I just started driving down the road and I was just like, hillbilly hippie. I was like, oh, this kind of sounds like the Judds. <laughs> like, I get down with this. Yeah. So yeah, it's just one of those kind of like, this is me song. Do you get a lot of inspiration when you're driving? I've had people say it's yeah. because you're kind of in that zone. You're not necessarily thinking. And so it starts to flow. I to like get down to music row and this melody hit me. And so I grabbed my phone and I started voice memo and the, the melody in my phone, I got pulled over. 
And that cop was like, you were on your phone? I was like, I was just trying to put down a voice memo. I was about to lose this melody. And he was like, <laughs> sing it to me. You better go write a dang good song. That's all I got to tell you. So, Nashville, yeah, Tennessee, he let me go. everybody. <laughs> but <laughs> He probably slipped you his demo. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He was like, like, I'm a songwriter on this side. <laughs> oh, yeah. Everybody is. Yeah. He's like, can, <laughs> for sure. Can, can, can we get something on the calendar? <laughs> I'll let you go. I was like, I was trying not to lose he it. He didn't ask you for a third. That no. was good. <laughs> He did. I'd have put him down though, just yeah, to get yeah, out of yeah. that ticket. Yeah, I, I know, wanna... <laughs> I know. Where do you get your best inspiration? I feel like I pull inspiration from everywhere. That sounds crazy, but I mean, like conversations that I listen to. I could be sitting at a bar and listen to people talk. Um, just conversation I have with with my friends, with my family, things that are like little voices in my head from my childhood. Um, I, I get inspiration from everywhere. I mean, even watching TV shows, I'll hear something that somebody says, and I'm like, that could be a, a really good song. But I feel like the ones that I end up recording are always the ones that are, like, inspired by my story specifically. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like I've been able to write with enough incredible songwriters here in Nashville that I've been able to, like, learn how to put myself into the shoes of whatever it is that we're writing about. I mean, if we wanted to write about this microphone, you know, like, they've taught me how to do that. Mm -hmm. And that's fun, and that's a really cool, like, exercise. Um, And they taught me how to feel everything that this microphone could feel. But there's something really, really special about it just being, you know, really personal, even if the song mm-hmm. is like so personal that it's it's so crazy because a lot of the a lot of the songs I grew up listening to um, that people were had their own they it could be names in their songs even though that was not my grandfather's name or whatever I still related to it and I felt like that they were writing it about me so that's the goal every time mm. and that's what we feel when we hear it and that's mm-hmm. why everybody loves it so much. Sweet. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right, what song do we want to talk about? I want to hear about Weekend. Oh. Because I love a good play on words. And we have to tell everybody how it's spelled. W-E-A-K. W-E-A-K. You see what I did there? Weekend. And I didn't, when I was, I know, I'm really breaking it down. But when I was listening to it, I didn't see that that's how it was spelled. So I didn't know it was coming. Yeah. And that was even better. Yeah. Yeah. It's always good when you don't know it's coming. still understood. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Good, good, good. Okay. Yeah, I I was on the weekend of a heartbreak. I know we've all been there. Mm-hmm. It was it was rough. I can't believe looking back on it now. I can't believe I let that boy mess me up like I did. <laughs> I mean, really. It's well, a, look who's laughing now. Oh, yeah. Jokes on him. Yeah, don't even get me started. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me started. He's probably seeing my face on a billboard everywhere around here. Sorry about it, brother. Um, She's haunting you. your dreams. Yeah, sorry. I, love I didn't this. mean to. It just happened. It I just that. love it. Um, I too. No, I just, I had this idea. It was during the pandemic. I've been, I had been wanting to write Weekend, um, but do the whole double entendre type thing. Mm-hmm. I love doing that. I even did it with a song of mine called Dirty Looks. And, um. There's just something really cool about writing that way because it's kind of like just putting together a puzzle. So it's really fun. So even though it was a, it's a heartbreak song and even though I was in a, a bad place at that time, it was still fun for me to write. You know, when you get really personal like that, how scary is that? To share with the world. <laughs> because, Girl. I mean, it's one thing for us to be like, oh, my gosh, listen to and, you know, talking about it or we're oh, yeah. I can't believe he. But then when you write a song and you hit send and that sucker ends up on an album and it's out for everybody, that's a level of vulnerability. For Mm -hmm. sure. Um, It's scary. Yeah. It's really scary, actually. And I feel like I did a lot more of that with this record. Mm. I feel like I'm not growing if I'm not stepping outside of that box and just pushing myself and uh, being vulnerable, I say, is pushing yourself. Yeah. It's not easy to do. Yeah. You Would know? you say that is a big way that your sound has evolved from record one to record two? Absolutely. I feel like I'm just figuring out who I am a little bit more mm-hmm. every day. And I feel like I'm just letting myself feel things. Just write it. You don't like at the end of the day, more people are going to be able to relate to you just being brutally honest. Yeah. Than just kind it's of true. tiptoeing around the truth. Mm-hmm. I it's think to when you start to get really vulnerable with yourself and you let that happen, then your fans 
relate to you in a whole different way. Way, you know, they they they're like, okay, she knows what this feels like. I can yep. hear it in her voice. Yeah, it's I painful. Know she knows. Yeah, yeah. We all put our britches on the same way. Uh-huh. We all go through things, and uh, thank God for music. I mean, for me, it's it's so it's my therapy. I don't know what I do without it. That's right. And I know a lot of people feel the same way, mm-hmm. and I'm glad that I'm able to share my story and. Um, I hope it gives people a little bit of hope. Oh, oh. we all put our bell bottoms on the same. Way. Uh-huh. Our bell I don't bottoms. Know. I jump into mud. I don't know if y'all <laughs> have bottom britches. Sometimes I gotta lay on the bed. <laughs> Listen, have you ever had to put butter on the zipper to get them pulled up? Have you done that? Maybe. <laughs> no, 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 we're not gonna no, go there. You just tell me. Sharing. I should have done that hacks. tonight. Sharing hacks. <laughs> These are hacks. You're welcome. <laughs> We've got um, some good <laughs> questions in the chat, so I want to uh, shout out Annie. Annie, she love it. asks, what has been your proudest moment in your music journey so far? Oh, my goodness. It's a great question. That's I feel like I've had so many different proud moments. Um, I feel like my f- first really, really proud moment was playing the Grand Ole Opry. For me, that was really special. I visited when I was nine years old, and I remember seeing Crystal Gale, Phil Vassar, Little Jimmy Dickens, Bill Anderson. I remember exactly where I was sitting. I remember thinking, I've got to do this. Yeah. I just remember that feeling. My sister, she was, like, passed out asleep on the on the <laughs> pew. She could care less. But I was bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. Um, for me, that was one of the, the proudest moments so far. And, of course, being nominated for all of these CMAs, that's that's pretty cool, too, just to be recognized. Yeah. When you think back to sitting out there as a nine-year-old, does it does it kind of stir up any like when you're on that stage? Are you like someone else is out there? Uh, there's a nine-year-old out there watching mm-hmm. me. Oh, now. I look at that same exact seat, the yeah. seat that I was sitting in at nine years old. I always feel like my eyes just kind of go to that seat and I see who's sitting in it. And sometimes I see like younger folks sitting there, and I'm like. You might get bit by the bug. You might want to get up because <laughs> this ain't easy. <laughs> I believe in that kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's the seat. Yeah, that's the magic seat. Uh-huh. Look got out. the juju on it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we've got somebody in the chat. Yeah. Actor 15. Lainey, this is your Houston friend, Polo. Yes, Polo. We met American <laughs> Idol. Oh, that's crazy. Literally, cra- I was probably, what, we were like 15 or so, Polo. Oh, my um, gosh. We met at a restaurant after we had both tried out for American Idol, and he's got an incredible voice, too. I mean. That's amazing. He's, that's awesome. Hi, well, Polo. He's on the chat tonight, and he just want to know, what song on the new album took the longest to write? And then he says, love you, girl. Ooh. Let me think about that. Probably those boots. The I keep talking about that one, but we did have to get together about four or five times to finish that one. Um, but when I think about the idea that I had the longest that like nobody would write with me, it was weekend. Oh. Really? So, yeah. Because hmm. okay. that's a hard one to do. Like if you yeah. don't do it right, I mean that's one you got to work for. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you think other songwriters feel like pressure? Especially did did they know they were writing for your project? Yeah. Okay. For sure. Okay. I mean, I I try not to like box people in and be yeah. like we're writing for my project, but it kind of just goes that way mm-hmm. a lot of the time anyway. Um, but yeah, I think I think you feel pressure. Hey, look, I, I feel pressure. I'm like, you know, we better we got to get something good. good. We ain't got many days. <laughs> the clock is ticking. You're like, let's go. Let's go. Let let's me see go. what you got. Uh, Mariah says, which song are you most excited for us to hear that you haven't released on the album yet? Oh my goodness, that's hard. Um, one that I feel like I feel like people are gonna love to like dance to is one called Grease. That's and a it's good a saying one. that yeah, my mama yeah, yeah. said back in the day, like, now we're cooking with grease. Uh-huh. I was dancing like, in my car. Were you? It's, oh, got yeah. a, it's got a yeah. funk to it. Uh-huh. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That one, I'm excited about it. Yeah, it's just one of those sayings, like I said, my mama said growing up, I could not escape it. Mm-hmm. It's also kind of like Dirty Looks Part 2. It's about okay. kind of like, you know, coming home, that uh-huh. blue collar love. <laughs> It's just showing my, it's showing my sexy side. <laughs> I didn't know I had one. Love. <laughs> if you don't write a song called Blue Collar Love, I you're know. missing out on that. <laughs> Kelly's trying to get a third. Yeah, yeah I gotta say, you better get a third. She's room. trying to get a third. Third for a worst. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> okay, Ritzy Gaming, I'm, I'm sorry if I'm butchering your name. No, that's Wants good. to know, how did you feel knowing you're going to be on Yellowstone? I mean, we haven't even gotten into that yet. I know. 
I, you're going to be on Yellowstone. I know. Y'all just reminded me. <laughs> and so did Ritzy. We like to, like, <laughs> psych her out a little bit. <laughs> like, For real, like, it's one of those things where I'm, like, reminded of, and I'm like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh. We're really, like, doing it. I mean, this is the, the biggest TV show right. around. This is my favorite TV show, and... You really couldn't plan for things like this. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is literally the Lord being like, okay, this is what's going to happen, then this is what's going to happen, and then this. So this relationship that I've had with Taylor Sheridan, uh, the writer and producer of the show, I've I've known him for several years, and they've put three of my songs in the show. But, you know, I didn't know what opportunities were going to come from it. Yeah, I knew there were going to be more opportunities because he's that kind of dude. I mean, he's like, if he loves you and believes in you, then he's going to do whatever he can to mm-hmm. give you those opportunities. So... He called me in February and said, I want to write a, a, a role specifically for you. And I'm like, okay. without even thinking, I said, yes. I mean, I, I was just diving head in. Just here we go. Like, let's do this thing. So we we filmed all summer long. I'm so excited. The cast and crew, they're just good people, good, hardworking people who love what they do. And um, they were a fan of my music, too, which made me feel more comfortable, you know? That's cool. Instead of, you know, rolling mm-hmm. up on that ranch and people being like, who's this chick? Who What's is she it? doing? <laughs> right? Um, so here's the question. Is it more intimidating to play your music as Abby on the show or to play on a stage like the Grand Ole Opry? Good question. Because I know that's a different vibe. Because you probably weren't, yeah. different vibe. You weren't even really probably singing. They had to track, right? Because it's the always going to yeah. be more scary right. for me to do the Grand Ole Opry. Really? Every time. Oh, wow. I didn't expect that. I thought you would say probably no. filming. The Grand Ole Opry gets me in my feels every time. I mean, I oh. walk through the door and there's just like a heaviness, not even a, a bad heaviness. It's like a good heaviness. Yeah. Like you just feel that spiritual like connection in there. Mm-hmm. It's and a special place. It is. Mm-hmm. And to know that I'm invited to do the same thing that so mm-hmm. many people before me like have paved the way in order for me yeah. to be able to do that. Uh, cool. I don't know if I'll never not get nervous, which I get nervous before every show. That's what you said. So, okay, we were talking in the other room. I, yeah. <laughs> I said, have you done your Dolly? And she's like, what? And I said, when I asked Dolly Parton, what do you do before every show? She looked at me. She goes, oh, honey, I just pee and pray. So she goes to the <laughs> bathroom. <laughs> she goes to the bathroom, and then she says a little prayer. And uh-huh. I was like, so That's, what? what is the, do you do something? Do you always say something before you walk up to the yeah. mic? You got a little routine? I try to, you know, I talk to the Lord, take a shot of whiskey. <laughs> it's about balance, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> I like it. And that's normally my, my routine. Um, yeah. Just say, Lord, here we go. Here we go. He's <laughs> got you. He's got you. I love that. Okay. I want to get to this one last question from Kaylee. Okay. She asks, do you have any tips on writing music? I'm trying to learn how to write and play guitar. Oh, oh. great, 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 great. That's exciting. Um, I'll say I started at 11 years old and my hands were so little. Like it would could barely even grip the guitar neck, mm-hmm. so it got a little easier the older I got. So I'm not sure how old you are, but um, do not let it beat you up because it it can. I mean, you could get finished playing for 30 minutes and you might your fingers might be bleeding, mm-hmm. but uh, work up those calluses and I promise you it gets easier. Just keep at it because at the end of the day, the cool thing about playing guitar is. When you're old, when you're 80 years old, you're not going to be able to pick up a basketball and get out there and, like, you know, shoot some hoops. But you can pick up a guitar Mm -hmm. on Mm -hmm. your couch. And for me, like I said earlier, it's really just a form of therapy. Songwriting, um, also, don't let it get you down. I mean, even if nobody ever hears the song, the song serves a purpose and it could just be for you. So keep writing and just and find whatever your your strong points are. I mean, it could be maybe maybe your strongest thing is coming up with ideas or maybe your strongest thing is melodies. Just dive into it. You got it. I love that. Me too. That's okay, good. we have a couple more questions and then we are going to turn Lainey loose. We're going to let her go in and get set. Her band is here. She's going to be performing for I us. I can't wait. <laughs> Like I said, you guys have got the best seat in the house. And thank you to everybody that's been joining us in on the chat and talking about all of it. Um, The question that I saw pop up that I just think is really poignant, and I wanted to ask you this, too. Wait in the Truck. Such a great song. I know Hardy wrote it. 
how did that collaboration happen? And you guys sound so good together. Thank Are you. there any future collaborations with you two? Oh my gosh. Um, well, first of all, the collaboration came about, me and Hardy go way back. Mm -hmm. We, I mean, we toured together years ago, me, him, and Morgan. When I mean, they were just playing like yeah. thousand yeah. capacity rooms. Um, so I'm so excited to see their growth and how and how great they've done in a short amount of time. But um, every time Hardy's truck breaks down, he calls me to use mine. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've actually sold my truck, but Did you? <laughs> but he really does do that. That's and so hilarious. I just kept telling him, like, you owe me, bro. You owe me. And so I just messed with him and said, that's why he invited me to sing on this song. <laughs> but um, he sent this to me this summer, and he was like, I think this is the best song I've ever written. Yeah. And that was hard for me to believe because yeah. yes, I, mean, I think he's, yeah. Yeah. he's just good. And it just took me back to the 90s. It took me back to why I fell yes. in love with country to begin with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that storytelling, the you know, whiskey lullaby, the mm -hmm. goodbye Earl, mm -hmm. thunder rolls. I could go on and on, but um, I feel like I needed to be a part of it. You know, I knew yeah. I already had a truck song out there called "Heart Like a Truck." I was like, let's just double down on it. Let's, let's go. go. <laughs> <laughs> Write what you know. Sing about what you know. Right. If you do not have an endorsement deal after this, I don't know what to do for I'm you. Like, please, <laughs> Lord, somebody hook me up. <laughs> Lady needs oh a truck, y'all. This girl a truck. <laughs> she needs a truck, y'all. Oh my gosh, that song's incredible. It really is. Thank you. That's and when incredible. it comes to collaborations in the future, I mean, I'm sure him and I will do more together. Okay. We just feel so comfortable around each other, and that's cool. He's like a brother, so yeah. that's very. We're cool. waiting patiently. Yes. Okay. Should we should we set her free? Well, one more. <laughs> um, there's one more person on here that is TK. R Z Y W K L D. So I have no idea what that means, but he said it's my birthday. <gasps> happy birthday! Thank you for making my birthday, birthday special. So we wanted to get that out. I would sing you happy birthday, but I don't know how to pronounce that. I know I don't either. <laughs> I don't know what the name happy is. Happy birthday, my friend. Uh, and they said you're the sweetest, Lainey, and we totally agree. Last question: If you are walking away with a CMA award, which if if it could only be one, which it's not going to be. It's going to be more than one. But if it was one, which one would mean the most? That's also hard. But I think album of the year is really special because it's, it don't matter whether you're a boy or a girl. And also it's one of those one of those awards that if you win, I mean, it's a win for so many people involved. Yeah, mm -hmm. super collaborative. You know, your, your co-writers your producer, your label, your publishing company, your management. Like, it just feels like a win for everybody. So that one right there would, would definitely uh, be pretty dang special. Oh, we cannot wait. So it's excited. coming. Okay, everybody. So thank you so much for joining us on Twitch. Thank you for being here. We are getting set. You getting your ears on. I'm getting a man, girl. All mm -hmm. right.